In the previous episodes, we made the app bar, the bottom navigator and half of the home screen's UI. We have the story row and we have the frame of the post from the profile picture in the top left corner to the photo of the Instagrammer. Now we only need to continue to write this widget function for the post. Let's see what we will need. Right under the photo, there is a row with different icons. Under that, there is a text for the number of likes. Then the caption for the photo that the Instagrammer wrote for the post. Under that, we have the comments section where there is a text element that tells how many comments this post got and one of the actual comments. Or, to be precise, an answer for an actual comment. And finally, we will need an add the comment section and the text for the date when the user posted. We will use mostly the same things as we have already used before, so it will be a good opportunity to deepen your knowledge. However, the caption for the post will be tricky, thus I can tell this episode is worth watching too. So, let's get started. The first thing is the row for the icons. Let's see what's in this row. First of all, there's a like, a comment and a messages button on the left side and there's a save button on the right side. And what between the left side and the right side? A big gap. So what does it mean for us? Yes, we need to use two different rows, one outer row and one inner row for the images on the left side. And the outer row's main axis alignment has to be... Between, yes. So what do you think? Can you do this alone? If you'd like to, you can try out, so pause this video here and try to code and just come back if you're ready. I will be waiting for you right here. Let's see the solution. First, we need to create an inner row. I'm setting a space between main axis alignment, but it will be the property of the outer row, thus we will need to cut it from here. Then, let's declare its children property. As we have talked about, we will need three images here, one for each of the icons. So I'm just creating an image widget with the hard.png and I'm setting its width to 40. As you can see, it appears right under the photo, but it's way too much right under the photo, therefore we should wrap the image with padding. You can wrap the whole row with padding to set its top padding, but since we will need to create space between the icons, I prefer wrapping every single image individually. But you can wrap the row with one and the images with other paddings that make sure of the vertical alignment. But you probably get the point, so I'm talking about this way too long. Anyway, let's move on. I'm pasting the padding and the image two times below and changing the file names. Alright, we have three icons. Now we need the outer row as usual. Let's take the main axis alignment line here and we need the fourth icon inside the outer row and we are ready with the first obstacle of this video but can you pick the line which is unnecessary in this code three two one yes it's the container I probably didn't think it through when I code this app and since it didn't mess up my code, I just didn't realize this is unnecessary. So these are the moments when I can learn from my own mistakes and now you can learn from my mistakes too. But back to the coding. The next step is the number of likes counter. I'm placing a text inside a container widget. The value of the text should be a variable called num of likes and the word likes. I'm styling it to be bold and have a font size of 16. I needed the container widget to be able to align the whole text to the left. Or to be precise, I'm aligning it to the center left, but right now that's just the same. Let's write the number of likes among the post function input variables and then we can add the value to this variable inside the function code, but you're probably familiar with this by now. Okay, we have the text on the screen and a little padding here and there won't cause any trouble. Let's wrap the container with a top and left padding. 
Okay, here comes the tricky part that I mentioned earlier. We need to create the text for the post. First, I'm starting with a padding because now I can assume what type of paddings we will need. After that, I'm using a container widget and I'm setting its width property to the width of the physical screen. To be able to use this parameter, we need to import the Dart UI package at the top of the code. The text would be easy if the username wouldn't be a part of the text, but if you pay attention to it, you can see that the username appears in the same line as the text of the post, but it has a bold font weight. With the simple text widget, we cannot set the weight to only one part of the text, therefore we need to find another solution. After some Google searches, I found a widget that can solve our problem. It's called rich text. Inside this rich text, we can specify a lot of great things. For example, the maximum number of lines, which has to be two according to the real Instagram app. And we can specify the overflow just like we did with the simple text. I'm setting this to ellipses, of course. And now comes the interesting part. The rich text widget has a property called text. Inside this text, we can use another new widget called text span. This widget also has a text property. I'm writing here the username and the space character. Here we can style it as well. So I'm setting its weight to bold, the color to black and the size to 16. And now we can declare its children property. Yes, this is why we needed to use the text span widget because it can have children that could be also text span widgets. Inside its text property, I'm writing a new variable and I'm naming it post text. We need to set its text style too because without this, it would get the style of its parent, and this is exactly what we don't want. Now, as usual, we need to write the new variable here and up here as well. I found a quote on the internet that matches the photo, so I'm writing that here. All right, we are done with the trickiest part. It wasn't that hard after all. The next step is the number of the comment section. It looks exactly like the number of likes section, but with another variable. I'm naming this variable to none of comments for the sake of consistency. And yes, we need some padding as well. What's next? Yes, comments. In the real app, it looks like this. We can only see the Instagrammers reply to somebody else's comment. As you can see, the username is bold again, so we need to use the rich text and text span trick again. But now we will need three different text span widgets. The first will contain the username and it has to be bold and black. The second will contain this comment tag, which is uh, the other user's name, and it has to be indigo and normal font weight. And the third text span is the comment text itself, so it has to have a normal font weight and it has to be black. So why don't you try to solve this alone first and then come back and check out how I did it. All right, I hope you didn't have any problems doing this task. Here you can check out what I did. So I used three text span widgets 
and I declare two new variables. To the place of the common tag variable, you can write an imaginary Instagrammer or... Yes, I'm writing myself because why not? And something like, yes, that's true, ha ha ha. And laughing emojis, you know, to make it seem like I wrote something interesting and equally funny. Okay, moving on. We have the comment on the screen, but we have to wrap it with some padding as well to make sure it's not at the very edge of the screen. The next step is the row for the add a comment section. As you can see in this section, we need to place our profile picture, which will be a circle avatar widget as you've already known. And we will need a text that says add a comment. Those two will be inside the inner row and we need two emojis outside of the inner row. Alright, so the outer row's main axis alignment will be spaced between. Inside this, I'm setting a padding in advance to fit the design to the rest of the elements. Inside this widget, I'm creating the inner row. As you can see, I accidentally used the container widget again. Don't pay attention to it. It's not important because it does not change anything. Inside the inner row, we can write the circle avatar widget with the background image of our profile picture. And then here comes the text widget with the color of gray and the size of 16. Let's look at the outer row. We need another row inside the outer row because we need two emojis side by side. I'm writing those emojis as text, thus we don't have to play around with extra images. You can find those emojis from websites like Emojipedia and so on. And we also need an icon, a circle with a plus inside. We can get that by using an icon widget and set its value to icons.addCircleOutline. I'm just playing around with the paddings and if I reload it, you can see that we have everything in place. And here comes the last step, the day counter. It is basically a text that shows us how many days went by since the user posted the photo. Let's start it with a padding that has 8 pixel edging sets on all sides. Now we need to use a container to make sure it's aligned to the left. Then we can write the text here and set its value to a new variable called days and the phrase days ago. Then we need to write this variable among the input variables of the function and of course we need to give value to it inside the function call. Yes, I know. If you write one here, it will be grammatically incorrect because it will say one days ago. But let's just pretend that yesterday nobody posted anything. It was a lazy day for every Instagrammer. Anyways, we are ready with the post function. The only thing that we need to do is to create five more post widgets inside the column and personalize them to our imaginary Instagrammers. Just use your fantasy! 
We are done. Guess what happened right after I posted the previous part of this tutorial series? On the following morning, I opened the Instagram app on my phone and I saw that the Instagram released an update and they changed the appearance of the up bar and the bottom navigator. So those things that we designed in the part one was slightly changed on the following morning or on the following evening. Basically, it's only this heart icon at the top and this shopping bag thingy on the bottom navigator. So in my opinion, it's not a big thing, really not a big thing. It's just kind of funny that it happened after I posted the previous part where we did this thing. But don't worry, you can find the modified solution on my GitHub. I placed another icon inside the up bar and I changed the heart icon inside the bottom navigator. You can find the link to this repository in the description box below. Congratulations on completing this tutorial series. I hope you enjoyed it. If you could hit the subscribe button, that would mean a lot to me and it would massively support my little channel, so thank you in advance. I'm really interested in what characters you came up with, so if you feel like you should take a video or screenshot of your app and put it to an Instagram story and tag me at Mercy Homer. I really like to see your versions too. Until next time. Bye.